people wanted to study your Bible but like had no clue where to start? Well, if you want to learn how to study your Bible as a beginner, this video, in fact, this whole series is for you. My name is Aminita Hoot, founder of the Hebrews12Endurance.com website and author of the books How to Find Your Gratitude Attitude and Through God's Eyes, Marriage Lessons for Women. Today we're starting a brand new series on how to study the Bible for beginners. Now this first video is just going to be the, fun the foundational or the fundamentals. What is it that you need to do before you start to study your Bible? I'm going to put this in three basic categories which is prepare, gather, and resources. The first thing you need to do is, is find your why. Figure out why you want to study your Bible. Why do you want to study your Bible? Because is this why or the reason behind studying that's going to get you through those days when you don't feel like it? Two, when are you going to study? So are you a morning person? Are you going to get up early in the morning before everybody else um, in your house is awake? Or are you going to stay up late and do it then? Are you going to do it in your lunch break? Whenever you're going to be doing it, you need to figure out when you're going to do it because what you need to do is create a routine. That way, if you decide you're going to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, then get up at 5 o'clock every morning. If you decide you're going to do it in your lunchtime, then do it every lunchtime, right? Because you need to put yourself on a schedule so that your body starts to anticipate your Bible study time and you start to crave and actually desire this time with God. As part of your when, you're going to have to figure out how often you're going to study. Are you going to be studying every day? Are you going to be studying five days a week? Are you going to be studying in alternate days? You have to make a plan, but make a plan that works for your life. Don't plan to study every day if you know that three days out of the week you have other plans or you're going to not be able to get up and you're not going to be able to commit the time to it. Make sure that when you set your time, you will be able to show up and you will have the time to dedicate to it. As part of your schedule, you need to also figure out how long. How long are you going to be studying the Bible? Are you going to be spending 5 minutes? Are you going to be spending 15 minutes? Is it going to be an hour? And again, you have to make sure that you actually have the time that you can actually dedicate to this great work. Where? Where are you going to study? Do you have a little section of the living room that you're going to be taking over for that time in the morning? Where are you going to go? Are you going to be doing it in your car? Are you going to find... I don't know, maybe you're going to go outside during your lunchtime and there's this one little quiet spot that nobody ever seems to go to. Is that where you're going to be studying it? You need to figure out where you're going to go so that when the time comes, you can actually just get there and get started. What? Decide what you're going to study. Now, I know, duh, I mean, I'm going to study the Bible. Yeah, I know you're going to study the Bible, but what are you going to study? There are like 66 books in the Bible. Are you going to be focusing on prophecies? Are you going to be focusing on the historical books? Are you going to be looking at a particular character? Are you going to be looking at a particular topic? Are you going to just choose a random book out of the Bible and start studying there? You have to know what you're going to study so that when you sit down at your place, at your time, you know what you're going to be focusing on. Now, a word of warning. A lot of us try to do what, what I call Bible ruling, which means you take up the Bible and you close your eyes and you let it fall open and you use your finger and you try to figure out, okay, this is where I'm going to be studying today. Mm -mm, don't do that. Because when we do that, we take the verses or the, word, the passages out of context and sometimes we apply it in a way that it was never intended to be used. And yes, there are times when that particular technique actually helps us or gives us a word that we needed for the day. But that's not the best way of studying your Bible. If you're going to study your Bible, I suggest that you have a plan. So if you're going to start by doing a, a book study, choose one book. Start with verse 1, chapter 1, and go all the way through to the end. If you're going to be doing a topical study, decide ahead of time what topic you're going to study. Make a collection of the verses that actually has something to say about your particular topic. Maybe you want to go on a website like BibleGateway.com and you want to search in for that particular topic you're looking for and either write out or print out a list of the verses. Maybe you want to use your concordance and you want to look for that particular word that you want to study and then you just go through each of those verses systematically to see what the Bible has to say about a particular topic. But if you're going to be doing something like that, again, you need to make sure that you read the surrounding verses because you want to make sure that you're getting the right context. The next method is how. There are so many different techniques that can be used to study your Bible. 
There is the soak or soak technique. There is pronounce it. There is reap. There is apple. There are so many different ways. You can do Bible verse mapping. You can do Bible journaling. There are all different ways. These are all different techniques that you can actually apply to your Bible reading. You can actually copy all the scripture and meditate on it. There are so many different ways. So before you start a habit or before you start to study the Bible, make a decision as to how you're going to be doing it, what you're going to be doing, where you're going to be doing it, when you're going to be doing it. And of course, find out why you want to do it. Number two, gather your supplies. You're going to have to have some basic supplies if you're going to study your Bible. At minimum, you're going to need a Bible and a notebook and a pen. But these things actually open up a whole can of worms because what kind of Bible are you going to use? Are you going to be using a physical Bible? Are you going to be using a Bible app on your phone? Are you going to be using a tablet or another device that you, you have your Bible on? Uh, what translation are you going to be using in your Bible study? What kind of notebooks are you going to be using? Do you maybe need to use loose paper? What kind of pens do you use? And there are other things that you can consider. Will you be using crayons? Will you be using highlighters? Will you be using a, a Bible marking chart? Now, I would recommend that in the beginning that you only start with the basics. Whatever Bible you have is a starting point that you can use to study God's Word. Just get a simple book and a simple pen and just start. Because if you think about all the other things, sometimes you're going to get so overwhelmed that you're actually not going to do anything. You're just going to be thinking about studying the Bible, but you will never actually take up a Bible and start to study it. Now, there are some Bibles that are that lend themselves better to a deep study and some that lend themselves better to reading. Now, just in general, the King James Version, the New King James Version, those Bibles, or the NASB, those Bibles are more for detailed study because they're more of a word-for-word -word translation. Other Bibles like the New Living Translation, the Living Bible, those Bibles are more of a thought-by-thought. -thought. And Bibles like the Voice and the Message, those are actually paraphrases. So you may not necessarily want to use the thought-for-thought -thought or the paraphrase when you're actually going into a detailed study you want to get back into the original language or at least as close to it as possible if you're interested in getting a list of the different type of supplies that you can use then hit me up in the comments below and i will make a video separate for that but for now we're moving on number three resources there are some things that make studying the bible easier things like a dictionary and while having a bible dictionary is helpful you don't need necessarily need a bible dictionary in the start you can use a regular dictionary so that you can actually look up words so that you can see what the secondary and tertiary meanings of a word are. Uh, you also would need a concordance. Again, you don't need to have this physically, but you can actually have access to the Strong's Concordance online. What I normally do when I'm using it, I have a physical concordance, but what I do sometimes, and I don't want to go into the book, is I go online and I just type on... I just type in to the search bar whatever I'm searching. So, for example, right now I'm studying the book of Esther. I'll just type in Esther chapter 3, Strong's. And that will take me to a number of websites that have the Strong Concordance built into the Bible passages. So I can actually easily online look up the verses either on my phone or on my computer. Another helpful tool you have is other translations of the Bible. And before you start telling me, but Amy, you just told me I must use what I have. Yes, I agree. If you have access to the internet, you have hundreds of translations at your fingertips. Now, a website that I love to use is Bible Hub because if you just put in the chapter and the verse, so back to the ex example of Esther, if I put in Esther 3, 2, it's going to show me a number of translations with that particular verse. So I can go through and read through the different translations and see which one makes more sense to me. Because sometimes, you know, there's just a verse that just clicks in your head. Another helpful resource for Bible study is Bible commentaries. Now, again, you don't need to go out and buy the book. You have access to the commentaries online. Again, a website like Bible Hub also has the commentaries there. Or you can go ahead and if you find a particular commentator that you like, you can just put in whatever book and chapter you're studying and the, the commentator's name and you'll have access to that particular commentary that you can actually read in its details. But I would not start using commentaries until you have first done your research. After you have dug into the verse, after you have found all that you can find, then go ahead and read the commentaries. And again, I recommend that you read multiple commentators because sometimes they give you different viewpoints. Sometimes they give you different articles or different points of history that can actually help you to enhance your study. So that's it for this first video. Now, 
If there's anything that I did not cover in detail, you can let me know in the comments and I will be sure to make another video for that. So, tell me, what are your must-have resources for studying the Bible? Share them with me in the comments below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Be sure to hit the bell so you can know when I post new stuff and share the video with a friend. Until next time, this is Ami and I'm encouraging you to know God, know yourself, run your race. Bye!